Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey, it's great to be back with our Celebrating Act 2 audience and our special guest is Dr. Liz Lister uh, today and uh, my partner John Coleman. How are you doing all, all of you? <laughs> hey Art. Hey Liz. Good to see you. Hi. Uh, Dr. Hi. Liz, I have a question, a uh, medical question obviously, you're our medical consultant. Um, I have two female relatives, and I, I find this a kind of uh, odd, and that, which is why I'm asking the question. Two female relatives, both of whom have had thyroid issues. Mm. And I wonder, is it, uh, I don't know any men who've had thyroid issues. So is this a female thing um, a, a, about uh, losing, not losing your thyroid, but having problems with your thyroid? It is definitely more common in women. It's eight times as common in women as it is in men, at least really? as far as, yes, isn't that something? And of now, course, common as we get older as well. Yeah, now I, I'm under the impression that their problems, and, and quite frankly, most of the problems with thyroids are hypothyroid is Perfect. not, that's, that's when you have less uh, of the hormone developed as that's opposed true. to hyper. Right. Thyroidism, yes. Hyperthyroidism, I think, um, has a, exhibits a lot of strange. Uh, Doctor Liz, when when you give us uh, a little bit more information, um, thyroid is not something that comes up in my general conversation, uh, <laughs> uh, and I know it's important. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't have one. Um, but you don't hear about thyroid transplants and things like that. Could you uh, maybe uh, for uh, people like myself in the audience? Talk a, a little bit about what the thyroid is all about, what it does, and and then why this problem, which I didn't know was widespread uh, or right. uh, exists, and, and how, to, how to know about it and treat it. Absolutely. It's very common, especially as time goes by. The thyroid gland sits right here, right below your Adam's apple, so you can kind of push it back and forth and, and feel it. And if it's enlarged or tender, people can check that out and talk about that with their doctor. So it's very, very common. Thyroid disorders are quite common, more common in women than in men, as we were just saying. As you said, hyperthyroidism is the least common. So I'll just mention it briefly, and then we'll talk more about what's much more common, which is the hypothyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is where there's too much thyroid hormone being made by the thyroid gland. And by the way, we a long time ago, I was part of an education campaign about thyroid health, and it was called Gland Central. <laughs> gland Central, because there is no cell function in the entire body that is not affected by thyroid hormones. Hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Th hyperthyroidism is where too much thyroid hormone is in the body, and people feel over revved and it's not a good feeling. It's like too much caffeine all the time, heart racing, jittery, weight loss that is unintended or inability to gain weight, okay, and to be at a healthy weight. And that is hyperthyroidism. So that we can talk about that another time if, if we want to. What I wanted to talk about today is the more common, which is most likely your family members and mine too, which is hypothyroidism. So the way I remember it is hypo is low. Hypo mm. is low. Right. Low thyroid is fatigue, weight gain, foggy brain, muscle weakness, which can affect vision. In women before menopause, it affects the menstrual cycle. The periods can be irregular. They can be heavy. PMS. So it's really, so if you start to think about all these different conditions, it's very, very common for people to have symptoms of low thyroid or hypothyroidism. Hmm. Is there one, con you mentioned menopause, is there one common reason why uh, women might be affected by this more than men? There aren't good explanations. Of course, the hormones are always thought to, be part of this and there's no question that thyroid and hormones have a back and forth interaction. Uh, I have my own theory which has to do with adrenal health. 
And so I believe, and I think we've talked about the adrenals. If not, we must be sure to talk about that. The adrenal glands are very important. Between the adrenals and thyroid, I, I call those the, the strength, sort of the core of our hormone balance. And women's adrenals are more stressed than in men because we get half of our testosterone from our adrenals. We get half from our ovaries before menopause, half from the adrenals. And when the adrenals are stressed in the long run, that can then lead to low thyroid function and low thyroid or hypothyroid symptoms. Mm. Whereas in men, the testosterone production sort of takes the workload off of the adrenals. So that's my theory. I have not seen that written, but that's my interpretation of what's happening hormonally between men and women and why I think it's so much more common in women. Is this a, well, go, go, I was just going to say, whatever the reason, it's important to know that it is more common. Yes. Yeah. You know, Another uh, uh, scenario. Dr. Liz, uh, just as a note, uh, uh, I uh, go to my GP twice a year. Uh, and in all the years, at least with uh, uh, my current doctor, and I can't think of any doctor I've had before, has anybody, I mean, every so often they might have felt uh, this neck area, and perhaps that the, what they were looking for wasn't. I've never heard any of my doctors ever address thyroid or say, oh, we're doing your annual blood work, we'll add a thyroid panel to it. Is this something that most doctors just don't pay any attention to? Chances are you've had at least one test checked out called the TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. It's oh. a very common test. It was developed in the mid 1900s and it's become the standard test. Unfortunately, you mentioned doing a thyroid panel, which is better than just a TSH. Okay, and but most likely I'll bet in those panels that you've had done routine kind of labs, blood count, metabolic panel, you've probably had a TSH checked here or there. Unfortunately, it's fallen into the, your labs are normal even though the range might not be as wide as regular doctors think it is. So whenever I have a patient tell me they're having symptoms of low thyroid and they're having, and they said their the TSH was checked and it's normal, I always in my mind hold up those air quotes because the, the normal range for TSH is pretty wide, usually goes from... 0 0.5 all the way up to, let's say, 4.5 or so. And so in this case, lower is better. The TSH is a brain hormone that stimulates, the thyroid stimulating hormone from the brain down to the thyroid, and it's a feedback loop right back up. And so the TSH is elevated when the thyroid function is low. When thyroid hormone levels are better, it feeds back and the TSH is lower. Therefore, most doctors are going to say that it's normal, even if it's up near the top of the range, whereas I like to see it lower, at least below 2.0, even closer to 1.0. Hmm. So for people to take a look at their labs and, and see. So if you're having symptoms of low thyroid, the classic ones are fatigue, weight gain, foggy brain. Those are the, the, the top ones menstrual irregularities for women before menopause, those are very, very common. And if you're told your TSH was normal, then it could be a question of looking a little deeper and getting more tests. Okay, so let's sure. go into the, into the hope channel now, uh, because you always uh, have a, a positive attitude. So let's say somebody is suffering from hypothyroidism, uh, 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 how treatable is it? And do you even need, if let's say your thyroid was, uh, uh, gland was removed uh, for cancer for some reason, can you still live a normal, healthy life? The thyroid hormones, especially in the presence of a thyroidectomy, someone who's had surgery and they needed to have part or all of their thyroid gland removed, they need to have replenishment of those hormones. It's widely acknowledged and agreed upon that we need some degree, we need some thyroid hormone in order to live a healthy, happy life. 
Okay, and there are things that we can do. All the usual ways of supporting our health are going to help thyroid health. Avoiding junky food, having a good diet, moving our bodies enough, all of those are going to help in addition to replenishing thyroid hormone. Definitely very important. Now there are, I'm sure there are some strains of uh, hypothyroidism that are more rare and they probably get the headlines. Yes. Uh, what, what are those? Well, one that's worth mentioning, and it's probably more common than we realize. In fact, we could have a whole nother segment just about this type, which is an autoimmune, an autoimmune form of low thyroid. Okay. And what, what auto, most people are aware of autoimmune illnesses where our body is incorrectly attacking itself, right? Our immune system is designed to fight off outside infections and insults, right? That type of defending our, our bodies, defending sure. itself. However, when it, when it turns against us, it's an autoimmune condition. And there is one related to low thyroid called Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where the antibodies, our body, my body, if I have Hashimoto's, my body is making antibodies against my own thyroid. And over time, it is reducing and attacking my thyroid and lowering my body's ability to produce thyroid hormone has all the symptoms of low thyroid. And unfortunately, it's not checked for very often. Doctors think that it can't be treated, which isn't true. So I think that would be worth a whole another discussion. We can talk all about just that form of low thyroid. You know what? I think, I think you're right. It, 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 it sounds like it, it, it deserves its own video. So we'll save that for a future one. Perfect. Thyroid, hypothyroid, who knew? Thank you. Welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.